Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Abbott. This is the fourth of my five videos on diffusion science. We know that diffusion coefficients are important. The amount of stuff going through a barrier is proportional to the diffusion coefficient. So where do the diffusion coefficients come from? Well, if you can't measure them, then you can at least estimate them using this formula, which is sort of approved by US and European regulatory bodies. So D, the diffusion coefficient, is estimated from the molecular weight of the molecule and the temperature at which the diffusion is taking place. You've got these three terms plus this polymer dependent term. So if we have LDPE, we're at 25C, and the molecular weight of the molecule is 100, the diffusion coefficient is going to be something like 4 times 10 to the minus 8. If the molecular weight is 200, it goes from 4 times 10 to the minus 8 to 1 times 10 to the minus 8. So doubling the molecular weight in this case reduces diffusion by a factor of 4. If we go to PET, the diffusion coefficient for the same molecule at the same temperature isn't 10 to the minus 8, it's 10 to the minus 13. That's why PET barriers are so much better than P in many cases. If we go to PP, it's 2.5 times 10 to the minus 10. If we increase the temperature, then the diffusion coefficient goes up. So this is a good way to estimate if you have no other way. But why not measure it? Well, how do you measure it? We go back to our first video, to the Fickian model, and we say we've got a measurement over 180 minutes, three hours, where we've dunked our sample, which is 50 microns, into the solvent. And we know that the volume fraction in saturation is 0.2. You can find this out, obviously, by dunking it in, leaving it for a day or so, and measuring it. In the experiment, you dunk it in, and every so often you pull out the sample and weigh it. And if you are lucky, then after your three hours, you find that you've reached more or less 50%. You just reached the equilibrium value you expect from Fickian diffusion. So this is assuming that there's no concentration-dependent effects. And you say, ah, OK, my curve exactly fits that with my estimated diffusion coefficient of 1 times 10 to the minus 9. But suppose it experimentally fills up much faster. Well, you just play with the slider until you find that it matches. So if it reached 50% after uh, 35 minutes, then you know the diffusion coefficient is 4.4 times 10 to the minus 9. Now this doesn't sound very elegant, just sliding sliders and until you get a good enough fit. But actually it works pretty well and it beats setting up optimization routines. And if you suspect that there's concentration dependence, and there almost certainly will be if you have this large volume fraction, then you just model it using the two parameters in the concentration dependent model. So that's how you get your diffusion coefficients. Try it, you'll be surprised how easy it is.